we are into the match point for today's best of three finals. It's uh, Asterix right now that's holding the lead 1 0. I have to see whether Hanami can put up a fight and make this a three game series or whether they're going to go home uh, without any contest here. Yeah, I mean, Asterix has been looking very dominant. That's, that's undeniable. But one of the trends that, like you mentioned, has been consistent throughout the day. Let's see if it holds up in this game. It's uh, the trend where, you know, 10 15 minutes, nothing really happens. Right. And then there's one team fire like 15 minutes and one team just takes over the game completely. Let's see if that's gonna happen here today again. Zoe Bank comes through very early. This is very interesting because this signals to me that Hanami can start looking for a Lissandra first pick. Right. If this is the situation, S2 is gonna bend it out. Unless they have something to bet, because Lissandra is not like one of those OP picks that can find anything. Right. Has a pretty hard time to get it. All you can really do is push, push, push. There are probably a couple of matchups that are not, that are not coming to mind that do pretty well against Lissandra as well. Aatrox is one. Right. Aatrox is a good matchup into Lissandra. Uh, there's a couple others. Lissandra is not one of those picks that you can pick into anything, but she just gives you so much later on. You have to think about not just the Lissandra being an issue, but also now that this is a series, right, they know that certain things are a threat, like the Zack, you know, they have to bend it out, and they're using bands on, the, on these things. I like to see like the to see arena, arena band out as well, targeted at Candle Burn, but as you mentioned, as you because mentioned, this is Red Side Asterix, Asterix, it's going to force some uh, uh, leverage to be given over to them at least. Okay, the Sandra band is a pretty nice adaptation coming through from Asterix. Here's the thing that you have to consider now at this point. Uh, first pick is going to be a drop from Flyfleet. Cassio do, Cassio do. Cassio is also a very interesting option, but we have to see who has who can play Cassio or not. That's another question as well. Cassio is one of those champions that she's good, but your mechanics have to Yeah, this is far. Because she's one of those champions that you need for like micro, like crazy. So you have to be really good at it. Good option. Can't fault them for that one. It's a very, very good pick all around. Alright. Right. It's gonna be a Cassio here. Probably going to the main. Like, I really strongly feel that most of these AD carries are not gonna be double mages. Right. So you can reasonably assume that unless it's going top lane, it's gonna be a mid lane Cassio here. Uh, what so, I want to see here though is that because Sion, not Sion, excuse me, Urgot and uh, Aatrox are open, they could just pick both of them up, play double bruiser with Carter's jungle and just go ham. Okay, so what are you gonna pick up now? Aatrox is up, they took Sejuani, so it's either Aatrox or, sorry, what was the other one? Urgot. Urgot, yeah. So it's either Aatrox or Urgot, you can favor Urgot more. It really comes down to the fact that Urgot makes your life easier. It's one of those picks where it's just like straightforward to play, straightforward to team fight with. Everything is just lined up one, two, three, just do it. Aatrox, you have to find the right team fight, you have to pop off, cosplay the shy, all these things. It's not that easy to execute. Right, right. So Astros are going for execution. Easier to execute, easier to execute which you can't really fault them for. It's a good game plan, it's worked for them. I, I have to agree, you know, when the margin of the margin error, error uh, margin for error is smaller, it makes it so much easier to close the game out. And in response, of course, the Aatrox will be taken. Of course, they'll pick it against the Urugot. See, this is one of those things where it's just like, it's a nice it's comp nice coming to Navi, but like you mentioned, the term is exactly correct. Margin for error is so big. It comes down to how you play it. If you play it well, you're gonna pop off. If you don't play well, you're just gonna get run over. Like, like Cassio missing like Petrifying Gaze is yeah. gonna be one of those few bad moments where she cannot she connect anything, but right now it's the Lucian, it's been locked in. I like this. this. It's the first we've seen this series. series. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of priority prior to this, but at least now that they've got that solid lane bully, I think Dice is uh, comfortable now on the bot side. Yeah, I've been surprised to see like Lucian falling down second rotation in a lot of games. Last game, Asterisk was actually the team bending out Lucian. This time around, they're gonna let it through. They have an option to come and make it but do they have to prepare to fight that Lucian? I think we're probably gonna see it right now. Okay, that makes sense. They'll pick up the L instead, you don't want to give that away. Right. Now, if I was to start a team now, what am I looking for? I don't have an age. I don't have any form of defense and stuff. Well, I do have Cassia W. That's right. kind of right. about it. But the main thing you need is you need actual engage. These champions can fight, but they can't but start. Can't fight. So who's going to be an engage here? I don't think it's going to be a support. So they, 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 look for the yeah. they could look for the jungle there. No, Zach this time. Camille is open. Zach Sejuani is open. Well, actually, this is just something I was talking to some friends about. Right. Like, right. If you look at the Singapore region, even if you look at GPL, like, barely any uh, players uh, can play Camille. Yeah, what's so, up with that, man? I mean, it just... It is a high skill camp. Margin for error yeah. yeah. is so very high. You mess up, you're just gonna die. Yes, that is so, very true. So, it's just one of those things where I don't expect to see a Camille. It is a strong pick, but, you know, so many things can go wrong. Keep our eye on uh, the jungle pick for Hanami here. Like you mentioned, they want some sort of engage. A Jarvan? Yeah. Someone's been listening Someone's been in. Listening. Uh, <laughs> Asterix knows what's up right now. Uh, they're, they're clued into the strengths that the casters are going on about. But that being said, there are still some options available. If you want to default back to, you know, really old school style jungling, you can always go for things like the movement, which is, you know, granted, old school. Right, right. 
Otherwise, they could Otherwise, still look to still pick look up and engage in, in the bottom half of the map. They can always go for a support that can facilitate that. Right, so if you want to play a support that can engage in the game, Ahon is a very good option, actually. That's a very good point. Ahon is a good option. It comes down to once again, champion pools of the players. Can you pay on? Yeah. Gronkhaus is not a terrible pick here. So these are options, but can you play them? And it is going to be Oriana and Cassio. But you've got the counter pick on the middle lane. This is really one of the situations where you have to say, Oh, I really wish we can flex a drop to mid lane. Yeah. Flex Cassio. I was about to say. It will make your life so good. So what, Lucian top lane? I don't know, man. There are ways to quit. Yeah, see, so that's the problem. Once you pick Lucian, your life gets a little bit harder. You should have picked jungle pick three. Then you see you can flex it around. If they did jungle pick three, they could have gotten the Java for themselves, made themselves a lot more available to these force fights. That Kane is... Uh, being covered here might be just a trophy. No, they lock it in, okay. So here's what we're looking at right now from the side of Hanabi. If you get the raid form off, Kane as well as Aatrox, it's one of the combos that I really, really love. Oh, man. You see IG play sometimes as well. It's just one of those things where you will like barrel over opponents. You don't really need to like, you know, we talked about magic for everyone. But what's the magic for everyone when you got like huge life steal, revives, you can go in someone and heal it even more. You kind of just close your eyes, right click the 80 carry, and 80 carry is going And the scary part is because if they're diving the back line, okay. Oh, Draven! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! So we talked about it, we mentioned it last week. Draven is maybe an option. Draven comes up. Nice, nice. So, so Margin Forever is getting kind of getting on both sides. Draven, mm -hmm. one of those champions, if you mess up, you are going to get heavily, heavily punished. Ellie Brom, sorry, Lucian Brom into Draven Alistair. It's actually not a bad matchup, but you have to play it correctly. Right, right. It can go kind of 50 50, 60 40 at worst. Right, right. If the Ellie comes in the combo, your bomb has to be in position to block out the Draven spells. That's the main thing. If your Lucian gets like one shot by Draven, that's slain over. That being said, I like that they have the aggressive jungle in the form of the Kane because Sejuani, time and time again, we've seen her only match. We've seen her only come in as a safety net. Kane can make those things happen with the you know sneaky, crafty jungle padding early on. So that could be a way for them to you know at least equal out if not get a better. Uh, Favorable matchup in that sense. Well, here's the thing. King can do all these things in early game. It's true, but what does King really provide when he gets to you after a sneaky buff? He kind of just hits you a couple times, gets a couple stacks, and all right, please, I'm going back to my jungle. That's really all he does. Until he gets you to rip on. That's when he really powers by Oh man, that W is so so frustrating. So stupid. Play again. The knockup is just up. Absolutely. But the problem is. What are you gonna do? You, gonna you have a losing lane matchup. Top lane matchup's kinda even. Bot lane matchup is a skill matchup. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but feel like that one's probably gonna go for both Aya and Claria. Uh, we saw especially uh, Claria, Claria had so much more impact in this game. And her Alistair was, like you said, you know, really warm. Really yeah. yeah. He is starting, starting points for the team points to get these fights, fights, fights down. She was always roaming. She was always, she was always, she was always looking for players. She was moving to the mid lane. She was tanking the front line. She did a job. She did a job, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have a Jalus that does his job, Rom really has to know how to match. You have to be unafraid of putting yourself in front line and be willing to take that chunk for your Lucian. So that's what we have to look forward for. We have to see if they can play it out correctly. Mid lane matchup. This is actually quite a brutal situation. Yeah, this sucks for Cassio. I've played this multiple times in solo queue. It's kind of lame. You can't trade because the moment you walk up, it's like QW. And she backs, and she backs off, she backs right? Off. Yeah, right. If you manage to get his Melchizedek, she puts E on it, yeah. and she walks away. If you overextend to try and chase down the trade, Sejuani punishes you so hard you don't take plants. You don't take plants, you're gonna get smashed by you want. Exactly. It's like, you know, it's just it's a shitty so, match. I was about to point out that the fact that she doesn't have plants means that Sejuani is definitely gonna come by at level 6. You, if you do take plants, like you said, you're gonna get soloed at level 4, level 5. Now imagine a world where you didn't pick Lucian, you managed to flex your Aatrox to the mid lane, you put your Cassie in the bottom lane against Alistair and Draven. It's actually a pretty good lineup. It's a pretty good lineup. It's a pretty good lineup. Not to mention, you kind of uh, remove the ability for Alistair to jump on you because of your W. It's a movement impairing spell, so he can't use the hitbox pulverize. There's no way they can jump on you. Play your ranges correctly. Yeah. He has to use slash and engage. He uses slash and engage. Your Bronk can disengage. Mm -hmm. That's kind of all you need to do. And then you just farm up free and then you just win the game. I, I like all the points you're saying right now, you know, Leonard. It's so. Uh, it makes so much sense how the draft could have been better for Hanami. Right now, we're past that. Now it's the execution phase. Now it's whether they can sidestep the margin for error and, you know, excel in this composition. Right, so what do they right, want to so do on the side of I can tell you can tell that they can look for skirmishes. Okay, that's, that's, that's probably true. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. And they're probably gonna lose those skirmishes. They just have to hit them a couple times, like King gets some stacks, and then just run away. That's pretty much all they can do. See if they can skirmish. Yeah, Cassie's not gonna really provide too much on the as well. So you really just have to let King get some stacks and get out. That's it. That's really it. Because Sejuani is gonna provide much more than King in the game until Red Form comes online. That's really the key thing. Now, if you look at Sejuani, Oriana, Elgot, and Alistair, what do all these champions tell you? They tell you that 
see someone on your team, if we catch someone on your team, yeah. he's gonna die. Like straight away, he's gonna die. As long as the target focus is right, they will win the fight because you can chain all that into a field beyond death and it's very simple for them after that. Yeah, and that's the most important thing. I was mentioning just now how Kane and Aatrox, they can live steal, they can keep these fights going. Oh god, kind of that. That's the main thing. Oh god has to fear beyond death. You get chunked too low enough, he's just gonna pull you in and kill you. In. Right. Oriana has a lot of guns, Javen has a lot of guns. So it comes down to the Aatrox and the Kane to play it out really properly. Well, guys, uh, I think we might be heading to a video in a just a couple seconds. Unfortunately, we we're very, very intent on analyzing uh, the, the matchups. And I think this is a uh, warranted extra attention because. There's some picks here that we don't see all too often in the Singaporean scene, and even more so on in the global meta. So definitely, I haven't seen a lot of Kane's. It's right. It's so cute. It's so cute. Right. So we are actually loading into game two right now. Like you mentioned, this is going to be match point. It is just best of three. We're going to be we're going to be looking towards whether Astros can maintain. Their winning streak. I do believe this is their third episode of lining up to yeah. win. Yeah. Heavy favorites as well. So we're gonna see if they can do that. Uh, team comp wise, I do think that Estris had the easier to execute team comp, barring I asked you. She's the one that has to be like, oh, I really have to play as well. The rest of the team is just close your eyes, press a couple buttons, team fight one. As long as Botlane doesn't uh, blow up in their face, it should be fine like you mentioned. Like mentioned. Asterix, three-time, uh, looking to be the three-time champion here, defending and returning champion still. Hanami looking Hanami to throw a wrench in the works and try to burst onto the scene and uh, take the cup for take themselves. For we themselves. see defensive, defensive line of scrimmage, but still, Tara and I are holding in holding this uh, pixel brush might signal a delayed so invade, invade here. Yeah, so they're looking for something cheesy, actually. Yeah. Both of these teams are oh, oh, man. This is going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be a little bit of a war. From the side of Team Konami, are they going on towards the bottom side of Astro's jungle? We'll see how this one plays out. If they walk in here and they get tagged, right, I think they might just end up dying. They're not going to walk in. Yeah. Yeah. So they're probably just going to be able to get this buff and get out. I think that's pretty much all that's going to happen right now. Yeah, they're going for late and late phase one. It might be starting to move off, but that wasn't the case in the situation. Probably will just get in and get out. It's very late and late, actually. Yeah, so they probably yeah, so they really expect it to try and go stop. But since it's not starting, it's a little bit on the late side. Right. Yeah, so kind of outline game themselves in the situation. Now they will just be able to get this one and get out. That what on the Raptor camp is so very important. They know Kane is not Raptor, so they know something is going on. What it is, they're not sure, but they know for sure something is going on. In a couple of seconds, when he walks over the blue buff, I'm sure they would know. Of course, there are some options for Kane to be tricky, tricky around how he passes. Not seeing Kane at the Raptors or the red buff is definitely a signal, like you said. Priority here in the bottom lane going early over to Aya and Clara. And this is the Conqueror Draven that hurts so much every time he actually tags you up. You have to respect that and let the push just happen. So one of those things that really just tip you off is the, uh, the player's proficiency or the experience in champions. Uh, Lucian Q star. Really you always want W star. You generally, you generally, almost always want W star. It gives you a lot more visibility. It lets you poke your lane. It lets you hit the CS. Yeah, normally yeah. Reach yeah. As well. I mean, the level one uh, normally wait for them to drop to like 30 health and they pop W to take all three at one time, right? So this is something, yeah, like you mentioned, like you mentioned, uh, proficiency and uh, experience on the champion getting shown here. And, uh, maybe a small loophole being exposed. Right, so we keep track of the situation right now. Uh, Lashua actually didn't realize that she was made on the bottom side. Mm. So just oh, click man. on find out everything is gone. Except Wolf. I get Wolf. Too bad. Too bad. That's something. That's how it feels. Yeah, that's how it feels. And the rock is just going to be able to stay out of the whole jungle. But the problem at this point at this point is... Okay, fine. There's no okay, fine. big problem at this point. It's still going okay for okay. the You just have to watch the bottom lane. CS is fine. It's not too big of a deal right now. I think we're just gonna be in for a pretty slow early game, honestly. Both of these junglers are just probably just bomb up a little bit more, get some EXP, get some gold going on. I wanna look to the mid lane matchup because that's where we have seen the most of the trading going on. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Kenneman is good doing okay though, actually. It looks like she kind of might be losing my bomb, but if you look at Malusian's mana bar, she's out of crafting pot stacks as well. So it's gonna be a very tough situation. This is good. Yeah, just give me the stacks. It's not gonna kill you, but just give me some stacks. Yeah, you definitely wanna proc the stacks onto the melee form champions. Get, get it as soon as possible. You wanna hit the Argot, you wanna hit the Sidrani, maybe even hit the Alistair a little bit if you can. That's kind of the ideal scenario for the game. And she still has a whole top side jungle farm, so this is going to be a pretty decent situation for Delusion. I feel like you might get a hole in right now. You gotta be careful how you can out the way. Something I wanna point out very quickly is how Cassio was playing the lane. She lands a Q, she got a little bit greedy and went for a couple of keys on to right, Kenobi. Right. It's not really what you wanna do when you Cassio play. You will burn through your mana so very fast. You need to just pump the Q, 
just be content that that's all the trade damage you're yeah. gonna get. Yeah. And then just keep doing that. And then you're probably never gonna run out of mana because you're gonna be CSing your E as well and you're gonna be doing okay. E returns mana on boss hits. And the reason you say that as well is because when you do land the Noxious Blast, the Q, you get the movement speed, it helps you dodge and you know, dip around the return damage coming in. So there. <laughs> Especially for older kids. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah. all in. You gotta, you gotta hit the E. Yeah. Like there was a period of time where Cassio was just like, I would go cropping block level one. I was like, E, I don't even kill. I'll just all in you level one. You're like cropping block. Are you thinking that? Yeah, that's what Fake was doing at the point in time. See the gang coming in. The stage being used by Big Hunty and the flash is going to get out. Not really getting the stacks there. Rock one, two, three. Just flash. Just a flash. But still, I mean, I mean, it's something. I would prefer stacks though. I was a king player. You did get a stack. The range one stack. Yeah, it was the range stack because the Urgot is out. Right. Yeah. Slip my mind on that one. So it's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. We do. Lustra is going for a little bit of a deep vision gathering on the bottom side of the jungle. Drop the campus down. Is she gonna go for the crack cam right now? This would be a nice little pick up for her, managing to trade back a little bit. Yep, we'll probably get that crack cam. We do see Hanami falling actually on the tower. Yeah, I was about to mention they're getting shoved in, and this is a composition, at least on the bot side, that can output a lot of damage quickly. It's diveable, but you have to execute it close to perfect. I think this would have been much more diveable if. You think of that season where stopwatch was a thing, right? Definitely would have been able to go for it, right? But right now, not so much. We aim for the hip up pulverize onto the Brom, I believe. Just trading some damage back and forth. Cameras panning onto Rock. Okay, this is gonna be a 2v2 on that thing. Oh, nice flank coming in. She needs to get the Arctic Assault. The slow is gonna guarantee she's flashing out. She still has the heal though. One more auto attack. We'll be able to pop the combo cross. Backing off, they will find a bit of return damage across, but like we mentioned, you know, the summer spells keep you alive. Cane Puri Red Form, we can't really do too much. The Legion actually should probably flash that one a little bit earlier. We had a little bit more health, we could have tried to trade back with Lush and come to flash. So it's not the worst situation since she traded her own flash for Lush's flash, but it's still not ideal. You generally don't want to lose your opponent's flash for a jungler's flash. So this will be a good start for Lush's flash. You can come back at 6 knowing that. Has no summon spells. Going, going, back, to your, going, going back, back to your point though, no flash point, though, no and flash considering Cannibal is level 6, six there is every potential to all in right now. You could all in right now. Cannibal is a little bit low on Of course. Go back and get 1.3k AP item. Lost chapter. Lost chapter. That's one and then come back. Australia is very low but managing to clear out the bottom side of the jungle. Probably maybe wants to hand over the boombox as well. Good trades coming in on the mid. So Cannabin will have to just probably recall pretty soon right now. Yeah, after this wave, I think, is the window for her to back off. Not enough mana to do a full clear. I think she has to sacrifice a couple of these minions here. Throw the W down. Zone her away from the Oh man. Oh man. Okay. She's gonna miss one and probably two. Alright. So she's backing on the Kenyan wave. This is a pretty decent timing window. She is pretty low, but uh, Delusion being full mana probably can just shove this one out completely. Lustrilla's though, gonna be starting out there, but I'm not sure if she wants to pick that one up for her herself. She is a little bit behind, still on number 4. Getting the buff first running early on, not too bad of a situation. You can clear faster, get more EXP, get your level 6, then you can start making plays for your ultimate. It's kind of what she wants, kind of what she wants. Rock though, uh, is getting close to level 6, but King's power spike doesn't really come level 6. Comes with the, 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 yeah. the red form. You gotta go red, and then you gotta power. Then you gotta it's kind of it's kind where of you really want to get to. I wish there was some kind of indicator for the spectator to find. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah, there's an yeah, 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 indicator for that. Indicator. So that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Yeah. We would like yeah. to know like yeah. how far he is too. That's, that's the most important thing right now. What I know normally the window for you to get the uh, yeah. option to switch forms is normally you know, 15 minutes, 14 minutes if you're skirmishing a lot. So we have to see if that is the timing that she can hit. A teleport be used by Neonazi early into the top side. Remember that she has spell books, so looking to swap into the Ignite. There you go. So this is a bit of kill pressure I think that she can force onto Coco. I'm trying to go for it right now, but this is a little something to consider as well. The Okay, a little bit of a gank attack up in the top lane. Probably not gonna find too much from this one. Uh, Mayanati is playing at pretty conservatively. Good us go for a little bit of trading attempts, but you can't really on her with a cane as well. Yeah, he's up. Very uh, not unaccessible CC. There's nothing all too reliant there. Lost, lost, lost. She's hung up Crux. That is gonna be level six. Uh, power spike nice. first. So that's a very nice situation. Probably will be able to force Cannibal's flash here. Oh. All right, she's going for a little bit of damage. She does have ultimate, so that's gonna be a tough situation. Get some stacks, but it's not really ideal. You need to just get away from this one. The Illusion had ultimate, but I think she was out of range. So wasn't able to follow up on that, and they were just back away with that one. Flash for flash. Yeah, they did again. Yeah, so it's not the worst situation. 
Actually, it's probably pretty okay, but you have to look for Lushless to be in for home deck right now. Round 2 might be coming in, you see Lushless clearing out the control words of the Tijani, setting up the game, no spells. So if an all comes in and they nail everything on her, she's just instantly dead. Well, still, there's a small window for all play if she can land a petrifying case. This is a very small window in the Glacial Prism, not landing though, the petrifying case is so good, they first fight, they can't reach her. That's the thing. There's this term that's kind of used, like, in Chinese class, I believe. Yeah. Your yeah. hands are short. Your hands are short. <laughs> Cassio's hands, hands are really short. Really really short. Keen's hands are pretty short too. Pretty short too. Whereas you know, uh, uh, Oriana as well as Sedrani, you just throw yourself yeah. so far away. Yeah. Cassie might be able to nail the fine case, but what follow up is there? You just have to be very careful. Cassie has no flash. If she has flash, sure you can flash for it, but if not, it's gonna be a very tough situation. Get some stacks going on. Might want to all in this. They go all onto the uh, Alistair who has to use his breakable will to turn this fight around. Getting stunned up. One more auto attack should do it. The whirling them just sailing past, and that's the kill going with the last And that's just the Draven's BPS. No one gets into the Draven. The Draven's about to hit for free with that BF sword. Draven is just going to This should be the Bloodthirster Rush Draven as well, which is only going to skill uh, even better in these skirmishes as uh, we hit into the middle stages of the game. Yeah, Blood Tuster Skirmisher, uh, I'm sorry, Blood Tuster Draven is just like, if I take a couple back trades, it's fine, I'm just gonna heal it back up. Mm -hmm. uh, if I team fight and you don't want shot me, I'm just gonna heal it back up. So there's a lot of uh, space given for Draven right. against the Blood Tuster, but it is gonna be the kill gonna be the kill Blasterous. She, was, she is 2 and 0, she's gonna get pretty tanky. That's gonna be a point of concern for Team Hanabi as well. Mid lane though, a blasting one gap is gonna be not too substantial, but you look at this, Cannabin is just gonna use it to poke out or out even more. At least Delusion has finally gotten her heal, heal and uh, flash and off Put on so yeah. small window for her to uh, be safer in this lane, just in case the all-in attempt comes in from Candleburn. Dragon available and camps up as well. Rock 1, 2, 3 moving over to the river. So what does that mean now that Delusion uh, flashes up? It means that once Lostulus comes in without, you need to flash it out. So that's kind of like a trade like out trade flash, and that's the timing window that's you're working on. Once that's over though, Lost Lost needs to time her uh, uh, own ultimate and come back the next time. Regions there again. So you just need to play around with flash on okay, so that doesn't clash, and it's gonna be a pretty easy gank uh, throughout. I mean, we have seen Hanabi tend to favor these mid laners that are quite easy to gank. Right, right. Nivea, now can see over without clans. They have to play it very smart. Very little room for it. You make mistakes, you are going to get punished. You overstep, you are going to get punished. Even if you don't make mistakes, you could get punished. So it's a very tough situation to play with. Yeah, but look at the way the illusion is trading against Kenobun. She's using, yeah, she's doing pretty well, but she's burning a lot of her mana to get the damage down and at least make an even uh, standing in the lane. Like you said, the gang coming in will probably end her life. You're not seeing clearing out. And the flash. <laughs> Okay, so here's the situation okay, so right now. Because Top is shoving in, and Roth was shown on the bottom side of the jungle. She showed on the water on the bottom side, she was clearing it out, I believe. Uh, that means Lustrous has full freedom, walk in, steal the blue buff, and that's gonna be tough because the is playing another mana on Reliant Champ that doesn't have blue buff once again. So it's gonna be a very tough situation for us to do. They're focusing on bot lane, focusing on bot lane. not very not action packed, very both AD carries just farming this up. Uh, Io with the stacks Io looking to catch soon, soon, I believe. Oh, yeah. she, if she gets a kill soon, she is gonna pop off. Yeah. I wonder how many stacks uh, the Draven has at this point. 100 CS worth of red, pretty decent yeah. yeah. Clara doing her best to frontline for AD carry. You know, like you said, it's like 15 minutes of uh, peace before the storm. Yeah, it's probably gonna start soon. <laughs> This is a uh, 15 minute mark, it's where it tends to kick off. It's normally around the first item buy. So like the first completed item, item, maybe a like couple components after that, then they can start looking for these fights. Now they can really start making up and dive. Sneaky, 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 there's a control ward in the second rush. Second rush. Rushers might be looking to make a way in here with the Glacial Prison as well as a flash available. At least there's low 6, so if they want, they could honestly look for a dive. Oh boy, but dive. They don't need to dive, they let this stun straight onto the Draven. Okay, that Yeah, they actually managed to trade pretty well, but the Whirling Death is going to do it. Do and finish off the kill. Off the kill. Uh, pretty uh, decent moves pretty from, decent uh, the from the Lucian to flash, flash out in time, time but, but the reverse damage the reverse was good damage enough to good get enough the kill on Brom. I think Lucian actually dodged out on the uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lucian dodged the glacial, glacial fissure coming in from the Drani, but she will but she manage to you know, pick up the Brom again. It's not too bad of a situation. Alright, she's gonna pop the last one on the way out. That's his up lane, man. Smart. You should always do that. Uh, pop the blast cones on the Baron, pop the blast cones on the dragon, make it a little bit safer, give them less options to you, and this is very nice on the Illusion. So, they encounter matchup like we talked about, and she is, you know, almost gonna get soul cute. 
close. Yeah, but into the turret, yeah, Delugia is gonna, gonna die from, die from the turret from shot, the and, shot and, and unfortunately, Rock 1, 2, 3 overextending a bit too much will fall as well. Permafrost is up. Not in range. Was the E not in range? I'm pretty sure that was in range actually. Huh. Okay. Huh. I think okay. it was in range. At least like when she came out, like before she like flashed away. You know what's the best case scenario here? Because Kenover didn't, didn't die. She managed to die. use the command yeah. protect to yeah. keep herself alive. So she that was a one for zero. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which is yeah. very nice touch. Very nice but still, like the doing pretty well in this lane, considering like playing against a Shadrani on the blue buff. She's doing pretty well to try to one v one out Kenna, but Kenna is like full of cues as well. Oriana is one of those champions that's not really the momentum, so you might think that maybe she's not being right. Just judging by the way she's spacing against the Castio, I definitely have to agree with you. Normally when you're playing this matchup, you want to stand just in front of your own range minions to get the spacing down. Anytime she tries to walk up to CS, that's when you pressure her out. But she's been standing a bit far behind and giving Delusion the space to navigate the wave. Very tricky as you play this matchup. Ooh. A lot of damage onto Aya, she's already got the Bloodthirster, so she's gonna be able to heal this up. The stun onto the Alistair is good. Lethal Tempo, uh, no, excuse me, not Lethal Tempo, press the attack as well. I think this is actually the first 2 really trade traded bottom in this entire series, by the way. I'm pretty sure this is the first Yeah. The first extended trade for sure. Let's the game to the first extended trade in Here we go. So Johnny's waiting in the wings. Does it out. Yeah, does have her out here and isn't gonna land again. This is very unfortunate for Lustrous. The glacial fissure. We used the counter engage and the teleport in from both top laners as well. Terra falling very low. Here comes the Aatrox in the center of the fight. Wall breaker. There's a lot of damage down. They look to focus the Lustrous. A great knockout off the back. They might be looking to turn this in their favor. Fear beyond that has been used, but with the wall ender, it's not really gonna do much. A great shockwave to catch. The support and now Asterix with five members looking to run down the bot tier one. Nice little command shot wave coming in on the end of that one to clean up Riai on the bomb. It dies to the Alpha. It's a real okay situation. Oh, did you get the knockoff? Yeah, I can't really go out. Once again, it's one of those games where tech flying easy to execute team comps. It means that Asterix can just stand as a ball and you can't really walk into that. It's this composition, like you said, so little margin for error. Anytime you try walking and be sneaky about it, they disengage with you because they have so many good tools. Now, red form came at 16 minutes. It's pretty much what we expected. Maybe this is when, you know, Hanami can try to turn the tides of battle. This is the thing though, is that too little too late? 4k gold disadvantage. Draven went all the way. Look at that, Bloodthirster as well as QSS. QSS is not like super necessary here, but you can't blame her for wanting to play at like a little bit. I'll, 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 I'll explain the QSS, QSS by because I can see where it's coming from. The fact that you are uh, able to QSS, you know, any threat of locking you down means you can play more aggressive, you can be able to go in harder and do more damage. So it not only functions as a defensive item, it also allows you to be more aggressive and with the Bloodthirster heal and shield, you're hardier, you can be in the center of these fights. So that's true, but if she plays it out correctly with the front line, the only real threat though, I would say, is the Cassio out to catch fine days. So if you play around that, you can kind of skip that for you. Vitality or something along those lines. Here we go, we're going to no flash, he's going to drop. Use this a shockwave, but gets dodged out. Smart moves there, and uh, getting one on the board 17 minutes in. Here's the thing though, look at the situation of the matchups right now. It is going to be a early swap for Masteries. They're going to get the Rift Herald. They're probably going to get top lane tire as well. Rei is recording to try and go and answer this one. That's going to be a That's pretty be a important thing. Can they answer the repair? Can they answer the top tower push? Probably not in top of You don't see anyone responding to repair yet. Oh, we do see a swap answer, I think. I do think they want to swap it. That give uh, Aatrox the one. Yeah, they want to give yeah, Aatrox the one. We want to swap this up. But like you said, repair is, is not going to be contested. I don't even think they know it's being taken away at this point. So it's going to go the way of Lustreless, uh, smiting it away and grabbing. The yellow they're just gonna use that at the top. Yep. Yeah, they're just gonna use that at the top, break that one open, get Draven yeah, on the map again. So Draven is so Draven, Draven, you won't really take over the game the same way. Draven Lucian, you Draven mean? Lucian. Oh, sorry, oh no, sorry, like in the last game. Oh, right, right. Oh, right. Oh, right. He had As compared to Tristan. Yeah. Uh, so, so, with Draven, you just want to fight. <laughs> like, there's not much to it. <laughs> it just makes you stronger. You get more gold, you fight, you kill more people. That's pretty much it. Whereas Tristan, if you still want to get, you're just gonna shred. So it's kind of a different way of playing this one out. But if you look at the set pieces around the Draven, Everything's the same. I just pick might be different, but you have a control mage, and you have the exact tree picks. Or well, you change the jungle picks, but everything else is It's still tanky, I mean. Tanky, I mean. It's still a tanky utility bot, you know? So, it's still the same idea. It's just have the similar team comp. They want to do the same thing. And I don't really see them faltering at it, because they do seem to have a good grasp of how they want to play out this Then I need to cut you off, because we see the rotation coming up from the Urgot into the top side. They want to make something happen here. A very obvious ditching of the bot lane means that they might want to collapse, and as you mentioned, use the Rift Herald in the top tier 1. You can see they're cutting the waves here. 
Buy some space. Yeah, buy some space for Lustrous to channel it, I think, would be the best option. You never want to get it cancelled. Okay, that's actually smart for them. Good hits up play. They know that they don't need to use repel here. Uh, but that was a hits up rotation. He had the edge of that one. It was a good attempt. I'm gonna take this card as well. Two men pulverize will buy some time. Uh, they'll fear beyond that. Not catching anyone. Dropping them back in is Clarius. He will flash out. Uh, using the unstoppable, uh, unbreakable will, right? Yeah. 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 Mid lane is now just go one v one. So this is the time where Cassie wants to cash in. Oh man, oh, man. Astralis, how are you so, you so good at this game? game. They find they the Brom and they get the kill, the cashing in the stacks. In the stacks. Dollar, dollar dollar bills, hundred and sixty gold. Good engage, good hits up play on the catch, but this comes back down to one of those things where it's just like, why? Why were you there? Yeah, why were you there? Yeah. Turret's really down. I'm not sure like what he can accomplish yet. And the situation without the Brom. Maybe they can go for two. Maybe they can go for an end of it's a break as well. Riff Herald charging down is gonna guarantee that they're picking okay, up tier 2. Ideally, you don't want to let him get the ram again. Oh, look at me. Uh, that is, yeah. yeah. The turret is a, turret is a gust of wind away from going, going down. down. This is where I would say deny it, but they're playing a different yeah. game. Wrong game, man. Alright, sure, I'm gonna take that one. We don't say that in this <laughs> game. <laughs> They will just get that and still want themselves to uh, Map is a little bit bad, so bear with me. I think that's going to be a 7k goal. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly under 7k. Slightly under 7k, Slightly under 7K. Slightly under 7K. Slightly under 7K. for Side Masteries. That is huge. Look at the turret advantage as well. Unbroken turret. Completely free uh, open line of turrets for Side Masteries. Whereas you look at the side of Team Konami and they have 1, 2, 3. 3 turrets down. 3 turrets down. Actually better than I thought. I thought they lost ball in tower as well. But that's still they would have, I mean, uh, if Kenoburn managed to get the wave in time. Unfortunately, they didn't reinforce it. and. It's only going to be a bit of chip damage, I think it's down to about a quarter, if not slightly less. Getting the rip buff for herself, the next target should be the dragon in the rotation into the bot lane here. Smite being used by Rock 1, 2, 3, but it will be coming up cooldown relatively soon as well. Do you want to contest this here? Any carries at top lane? So they have to really ask themselves, is it worth us? Standing around here, you know, trying to like decide whether we want to fight it or not. That is typically a mistake uh, seen made very, very often by... I would have liked if they walk mid, right? Just walk mid and get the early priority. Send your Aatrox down bot. This is what they did, but it's a little bit too late. It's a very common mistake made by Rock people. I mean, it's one of those things where you're uncertain if you just commit to a call, but... But being so uncertain like this, it delays you so much. You give the dragon, you lose your tempo, and you just fall even further behind. So instead of just losing one thing, you lose two things, and... It always spirals out to something more after this. Right now, the uh, Urgot here, Mario, is moving down to the bot side with the teleport up. Up is being matched by Coco, so both top laners have access to a global presence if they need it. That being said, the call is being call made is to move, move over to the Baron and bait this one beat. out. Look at the control oh, ward and they're starting this one up. Man, this, they got it. They don't care, man. No one even knows. They don't care. They just want to take this. is a three man take. And Kenoburn with the advanced position up in the wave. You can see if they try to walk over, right? She's just going to call this one out. Yeah, she's very confident in playing this one out. She knows that she. Yeah, I think they could have gotten that one for free, though. They are just going to opt back away from this one, though. Maybe they can get some money after they are standing on the after that thing, right? They didn't realize at the start they were standing on the wall. Oh, he's just gonna come down sitting now. You are very squishy on that game. Ooh, they Great they show present and the standard side as well. Using the out to buy some time for herself. Can the rest of the team come to back this one up? Rock 1, 3, 3 now, trying to dodge it out. Gets a two man knockout. One more attack should do it. She's chasing and leading them away. Here comes the Aatrox in the center of the fight side. Urgot has joined in as well. I don't know if this was a good or bad decision because now all five members of Asterix are here and the opposing jungler is dead. This is probably Baron here, Leonard. Right, so this is one of those things where, like, prior to this play, every single team coming in from both okay, well, let's go that top. They're gonna try to contest this. Raytrox is in a pretty good position. If he comes over a flank, you know, he still has well and he can make a very grand entrance. Alright, they just need to buy time. Once King comes back up, it's okay. Oh, Say by time, she's been caught out using the wall ender in the center of five people. I don't think the team should come to back this one. Oh, this cut your losses. Oh, the shockwave is going to finish her off. Okay. She flashes a while to try to get out that one. Hit ambitious. They just can't let Ellie come in. Oh, the petrifying gaze! What is going on? But it's too little to me. They can kill Lost Killers though. Nice Lost Killers. Why? Why? I don't understand, Leonard. Why are they committing so many of these resources when they should just back off? Oh, they're trying, you know. It's one of those things where it's like, maybe if I can get played out, I can try to do something. Right. But right. something I want to point out is prior to their play towards the 
something that I know is very nice in both companies is every single TC has been pretty much identical in timing. Mm -hmm. That's very nice, man. It's a good team player as well. They both know when they're needed, but they're needed. That one main last was a bit quicker to the draw. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Rock 1, 2, 3 just get picked out there. They do not manage to get a Baron in the end, but still, that is very favorable positioning to make the Asterisk. They can just pick up the kills, pick up the wards, pick up the vision control and top side jump. A recall is coming in from AD carry in the mid lane of Asterix. It's going to be a Moral Normal Comp pick up for the Orianna and another BF Sword for this Draven here. More damage is always good. I guess more damage is always good. Draven's one of those guys where you just stack the BFs off and he is comfortable. Look at the items coming out though. Mid lane, pretty even actually. Uh, I do like that Cassie uh, like now has Rylai's Crystal Scepter. That's a very, very mm -hmm. good timing when you spike. If you do fight at front to back, uh, you're probably gonna lose on DPS, but that Cassiopeia on the is gonna be such a big deciding factor right. in these right. fights. It buys you so much space, it buys you so much space, it buys you so much time, it makes it very hard, especially for Draven, to cross that line. If you get that line out on Draven, line, it's gonna be very hard for the player. You're starting to see this, you know. Uh, you know area control area is a bit easier okay, right now. I think wrong is it. The uh, rest of the team is uh, here to back, back her up. Her okay. up. So it's we'll 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 live for a second longer, for a second but like you say, you know, very iffy, iffy jump iffy forward. Jump I think the stand behind me was quite unnecessary quite there. Behind me there. Like, <laughs> useless there. Like, it didn't accomplish <laughs> anything. And things onto the Baron, you can see the focus of Konami. They want to be able to clear the vision out or at least put some wards down. They're worried that they might be stopping the Baron, but up until very recently, they had full vision of Aya. They knew she was clearing out the mid so they don't really need to be concerned about that. This is, a, carry, this, is a, you know this is a team that cannot sneak the Baron away without yeah. Aya as well. I mean, if you look at Hanami, if they were in the lead, Lucian and uh, Cassio might have been able to take it, but not in this case. In fact, this is just one of those team comps that's not like super great at the ring Baron, but they are good at this turning. Oh yeah. oh yeah. And that seems to be what they're looking for right now. At least I hope that's what they're looking for right now. If they try to turn around this Baron, they do have so much engage and they can't really put it. Where's the team on Konami right now? Why is Rayai in the middle? Okay, I want you to keep your eyes on the cane right now. She has so many good ways to come in. All she needs is the vision. It's down to a thousand. Oh, she's not gonna get smited away. It's gonna be taken away by Lustrous, the queen of the jungle. They're turning the fight around. Clara in the front, tanking it up. The shockwave catching three. Facial prison not even needed as they turn this fight onto delusion and dice. They're just running them down. Why is this support in this? Oh, it's a very simple question. My heart, my heart. It's tough, but this is once again another fight for team fight. Going over to Asterisk, they are just gonna yeah. run this one down at this point. Draven, Draven, five, two, and six. You can't really hold back on the call like that. Every check Every that she's gotten, she's, she's cashed in, in now. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. 5 0 and 6, she's not losing any stacks. 200 CS worth of stacks. 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 Alright, that's a pretty comfortable that's position to be in as a Draven. Gonna bring in Hibbertan, this is probably gonna be game for Asterisk. Moving over to two sides actually, so like you said, um, a bit of a two pronged approach. Mid inhibitor will fall and pop inhibitor turret now. The next to go, Asterix. Not wanting to overstay that welcome, we'll just take the objectives and back off, just reset and maybe opt to take the mountain dragon for themselves here. Yeah, they can just grab the mountain dragon on the way out of this one, and then they can just come back, take the top inhibitor with the rest of the Baron buff, and then it's gonna be a pretty simple game for them to play out. Just run it on ball. 27 minutes 27 in, minutes I think in that Asterix are making a very good case. It's totally over at this point, right? I mean, if we had to be honest, <laughs> based on your professional <laughs> opinion as a coach, <laughs> this is a... Uh, it's it's uh, over the moment it's over. It's past the... Again. Again. <laughs> the second time where, you know, it's really barren, it's going to be a very high game, very high out, especially if you give it 5 or 0 5 So, it was an attempt from Manabi to try and defend that one, but it's too little too late to get we don't want to discount them discount out them too early, early, but like you said, the like you said, odds are pretty much overwhelming much against them. Against them. Uh, like 12,000 gold, 12, gold. Asterix looking to claim the looking third the title third in a row in a in FSL Season 3. three. three. And not to forget, you know, if you win this, you become the representatives of uh, Singapore and Malaysia for F FSL Elite. Elite. So you, will, you will play internationally, you know, with the Thai as well as uh, Philippines teams. I do believe that that has a cash price yes. pool as well. Yes. It's very important to take note of that one. Always good to be battling it out. Uh, I think it's like two and a half grade. Of course, we do have some nice prizes for them here today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do believe it's Logitech sponsored gear. 
So once again, so once again a little bit loud. Shout out to sponsors, Logitech, Secret Lab, Singtel, Legion, Escape, Josudo, and X Split. Yep. This is probably gonna be one of the last pushes coming through Estrus. Maya with the blood tester. Just taking it up. Lasterless smells blood and water. Goes for the dive. It gets locked out, but now Rai is the first to fall. The rest of the team now chasing good in the bag. Whirling Death is gonna chip them out, but it's too little, too late. They don't have damage. They don't even need to confirm any more kills. They just need to pick one and then run it in. Yeah, so here's the thing. They can't do any more defense. Lucian has two items, it's not enough. Cassie has two items, it's not enough. Kane and Aatrox are both on two items, but it's just not enough. Frontline is so tanky from Astros. We talked about this so many times. Three big beat frontliners. You can't really do much against that. The margin for error way too little, and they're looking to close this game out. Shifting a bit of the aggression onto themselves. They flash forward, great dodge there. See the split push coming in, they will get the last inhibitor turret for this game and probably the tournament as well. And they're looking to close this out. They have to make a stand here, Hanami. They don't want to go down without a fight. Can they do it is the question because the Nexus Tower is really going down. They really need to fight here. This is almost going to be a finishing blow. The Shockwave is just going to finish them up and yep. They need to try to look for the Draven, but you know, you can't really dive the back line when you're this far behind, and that's just going to be. Game, game over, game over, game, game over. over. Walking it in, looking to pet their KDA. Oh man, the oh damage. Man, the damage. Triple, kill triple, kill triple kill in for Kendall Burns. She Kendall fully Burns. deserves, deserves it this tournament. And right now, right now, a couple hits more on the Nexus. Looks like Asterix, Asterix, Asterix will be your three time winners for FSL, winners for FSL and, uh, and uh, claiming the title of season three as well. Strong showing across the board coming to Burns. Every player doing their job, every player doing what they needed to. And I think that that's the most important factor to consider. You bring consistency across the board. Everyone does their jobs, everyone does well. Well, you're gonna be a pretty hard team to beat. I dare say I that dare the performance that they put up today would rival some of the big boys in the GPO in Southeast Asia, SGMY, right? I mean, you're right? you you stretching it a little bit. Stretching a bit? Stretching a bit? How do you feel about it in Singapore-wise? Singapore -wise. In terms of their gameplay today? Uh, I don't want to read too much into okay. it. Okay. Their team play was yeah. good. Okay. Coordination was good. They had an idea of what they wanted to do. But the problem at the end of the day is you always need to consider mechanics. Right. That's always right. a That's big problem. Okay. A lot of the female teams actually have a pretty good idea of how to play out the game. Mm -hmm. The problem comes down that you know you have all these solo queue stars, right, 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 and right, right. kills and stuff. That's where it's hard. That's okay, so okay. Leonard tempering so our expectations. Our I was trying to you know make them, make them look extremely good. Extremely but, uh, yeah, good. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. But, but you have to you know take it back and look. Okay. 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 So uh, I think that was a very good showing of games today. Overall exciting matches. I have to give my MVP. I'm a bit undecided. Undecided. Okay. So who do you give it over to Leonard? Prior to this game, I would give it to Kendall. Right. Right. But after this game, I don't know. I, I can I give a double MVP to Ayo Sure, Claire. Sure. Double MVP to Ayo Claire. So underrated. Underrated. Smash everybody. Smash everybody. Smash okay, don't smash everybody. They always do their job. On that note, guys, you know, don't forget that we do have the MVP vote. That's how you're going to win the secret lab chair. Uh, the winner of the MVP vote of the Asterix will be, I think, walking away with a Logitech headphone. And the person, you know, we'll pick out one person and nominate them. And that person will win the secret lab chair, of course. So do stick around, you know, cast your votes and. Uh, Feel free to mingle around the venue, of course. It's not over just yet, you know. Jenny will be out later. Rivertru will be here to give out some prizes as well. Yeah, I think that that's one of those things that a lot of people are waiting for as well. Secret Lab Chair. We can't vouch for it. It's really it's super comfortable. Yeah, I'm not normally a fan of game chairs. This is actually really cool. This guy is great. Shout out. It's an insane, insane use. And with the lights coming on, guys, I believe that'll be it for us on the live stream. Once again, I'm Daryl Hungry Lim. And with me today, always chiming in with his expert analysis, it's Lennon Omolo. We'll see you guys real soon and hopefully next year for FSL Season 4.